My name is Fionn Ovington, and I graduated with a BA in Graphic Design from Cambridge School of Art in July 2020. My final year major project explores words rarely encountered nowadays. I chose words from Shakespeare, Keats and John Clare for their powerful effect on my imagination. I wanted to create designs which communicated the beauty of these forgotten words. I also wanted to turn the designs into puzzles so that the words could be experienced through the hands and the eyes. I created a series of eight designs for the project. This video will showcase the three designs that represent key stages of the project. I will describe the new printmaking technique I developed to create these three designs. I will also describe how I responded when lockdown restrictions prevented my plans to produce puzzles for my designs and how I adapted my new printmaking process to a home environment. The word raven appears in many Shakespearean plays, often with ominous associations. I decided to create a design responding to raven as I wanted to explore the dramatic potential of the word. I chose images of raven heads, wings and claws to maximize the dark drama of each body part. To create this design, I developed an experimental process which combined paper cutouts and monoprinting. I traced the images transferred them onto white paper cut out the shapes with a scalpel knife. I arranged the shapes into different compositions to identify the most effective layout. I chose this one as the shapes slotted together like a jigsaw. I used foam pads to secure the paper cutouts onto a background. This helped the take up of ink onto the surface of the cutouts. I attached the foam pads to the back of the cutouts, then applied the ink with a roller. I put the stencil through the press. The imprint of the foam pads on the final print was a surprise. I thought the imprints created an interesting mosaic effect, adding an extra dimension to the print. The existing composition was too static. I overlapped the shapes on Photoshop to produce more energy and movement. The raven print became the prototype for several of my later designs. For my next design I chose frostle, which is an archaic term for song thrush. John Clare uses it in his poem, First Sight of Spring. The combination of letters that constitute frostle gives the word force and energy when it is spoken. It was these qualities I wanted to communicate through my design. I included images of thrush's claws to reference the primal aspects of birds. As with the prototype Raven, I traced, transferred and cut out shapes from paper. I used red paper to link to how birds arouse fear because their beaks and claws have the power to kill and draw blood. This time, blue tack gave me the freedom to adjust the shapes, unlike the permanence of the foam pads used in Raven. 
I trialed several compositions to identify the best interaction between the shapes. I chose this composition for its strong dynamic movement. I decided to develop the Raven process further by using dry point etching to add another layer of detail to the body parts. I wasn't happy with the outcome of the etching process. The marks were too blotchy, and the blue tack was flattened. But rather than give up, I altered the original scanned images on Photoshop to include a yellow background which added energy and allowed the bird shapes to stand out dramatically. I placed the letters behind the body parts as separate Photoshop layers. This meant I needed to make the letters large enough to be easily read. I used solid black to make the letters stand out against the body parts and the yellow background. The letters are moving downwards because I wanted them to have the same rhythmic energy and flow as the composition. Drawing the puzzle lines was the final stage in the design process. To create the lines, I transferred the Frostle Photoshop file into Illustrator and drew the lines with the pen tool on a separate layer. I chose white for the lines as they were the best contrast against the red body parts, black letters and yellow background. My plan at this point was to produce puzzles from my designs. This is a mock-up. But making puzzles became impossible when the 3D workshop was closed due to lockdown. This setback resulted in a creative turning point. I decided the designs could be exhibited as a series of large format prints in a gallery setting. I would keep the irregular outer edges of the puzzles. The lines that were intended to divide the design into puzzle pieces became visual metaphors for the fragmentation and fragility of words we risk forgetting. One of the designs I created during lockdown was a response to the word mooncalf from Shakespeare's The Tempest, which means deformed offspring or monstrosity. Mooncalf offered the opportunity to explore perceptions of disfigurement to challenge beliefs that non-standard body parts are unattractive. The images selected for the design were chosen for their strong shapes. I was now working on my bedroom desk, where I had created my own small studio. This is because, during lockdown, I had no access to the university printmaking studio. Just as before, I traced, transferred, and cut out the images, then trialled several compositions. I chose this composition because the cutout shapes interacted well together, achieving a rhythmic harmony. After sticking the cutout shapes onto paper with foam pads, I applied ink with a roller, 
using a paintbrush for the intricate areas. I used wooden spoons to apply pressure to the prints, as I had no printing press. I used different wooden spoons and different surfaces of the spoons to apply pressure in the right places. The foam pads gave the prints a skeletal appearance which linked to the shapes of the bones. I chose this print for its distinctive shapes and defined colours. Overlapping the shapes on Photoshop produced the effect of clouds passing over the moon. I used Photoshop to place the letters on separate layers behind the transparent body parts to increase the rhythmic harmony of the design. I chose the Volcorn Serif font because its simple outlines provide legibility without overcrowding the intricate shapes and movement of the body parts. I introduced a dark blue background and chose silvery white tones for the letters to link to the moon's serenity and luminosity against the night sky. I transferred the Photoshop file into Illustrator and drew the lines with the pen tool. I used light blue for the puzzle lines so they would show clearly against the body parts, silvery white letters, and dark blue background. I then cut the outer edges of the design. This project was both exciting and difficult. I set out without knowing the answer to what would emerge. I was often uncertain and had to start again on several occasions. Although I had to abandon puzzle production, the attempt enabled me to explore the relationship between drawn shapes and 3D objects. I thought a lot about how images could shift between three dimensions and the flat print plane. The restrictions of lockdown created a turning point in my thinking when I suddenly understood that my project was about how we relate to reading letters and to interpret meaning from them. Working at home was a powerfully creative experience. The deep solitude induced an intense focus. This allowed ideas to grow and my art to become much more experimental than it would have been without the extraordinary circumstances. My final year project resulted in a series of prints for display on a gallery wall. At their heart lies the relationship between language and image.